I'm Jenny Graham and I hold the Guinness World Records title for being the fastest woman to circumnavigate the world by bike. The journey took 124 days and 11 hours. I learned to cycle when I was a kid, so four or five, and then it was only five years ago that I entered my first race and it was an endurance race and from there I just started sort of building up these miles and finding out that actually I've got quite a good sort of diesel engine and I can keep going so I'm never going to win in a sprint race but I can I can keep riding all night and I enjoy that sort of like big miles of things. So. So I started my trip in Berlin at the Brandenburg Gates in Berlin and then I headed east so I went across Europe into Russia, Mongolia and China and then I flew down to Australia, across Australia, New Zealand, south to north and then flew up to Anchorage before coming like down the Rocky Mountains and right the way across Canada to Halifax in Nova Scotia and then back into Europe where I came up through uh, you know Portugal, Spain, France, Belgium, uh, Holland and then into into Germany to get back to the Brandenburg Gates. The trickiest part was going across Russia and um, east of Moscow there was the Trans-Siberian Highway and the traffic was just crazy like like crazy uh, so many trucks I'd never ever seen so many trucks there in my whole life um, and they were just coming flying past you and there was no room for cyclists and it was just so dangerous. So I decided to cycle at night at that point. It was like the safest thing to do is turn my night into day. So I'd ride until like eight in the morning, find, a, find somewhere to sleep through the day and then get back on the road about three in the afternoon. And I did that probably for about 1200 miles just to get out of the really busy section. So I chose to take on this record unsupported. So when I set off from the start line, that was it. I was on my own. So I carried everything that I needed to fix myself, to fix my bike, to feed myself, to sleep at night. I had no other, like no one out there supporting me. I had no van or uh, yeah, no bed at night and things like that. So I just ca carried a really basic a toolkit that I felt that would get me on the road and I can ride a broken bike for a really long time until I find a bike shop and that was that was my sort of theory that would work for me but it meant that when I was in between bike shops and things went wrong like um, you know I'd run out of oil or I think I might have left my oil somewhere and I went through sun cream on my chain and I went through um, oil from sardines like the sardine oil just to like just to keep me going just to keep me going till the end. I was just crossing in between Mongolia and China, so there's um, a, there's a, a space of no man's land that you're not allowed to cycle over. So uh, these lovely people have been able to bikes up there. Like, I'm a little bit worried about it. So the first wildlife encounter that I came across that really shook me was when I landed in Australia and I faced the kangaroos. <laughs> it's like these fellas are massive they're like huge big kangaroos and they were jumping along beside me and it was like I've not really thought this through like kangaroos didn't even come into the equation you know I was worried about snakes and I was a bit worried about bears but kangaroos so when I told my son that I was going to do this he was like well of course you're going to do this you know he'd seen what I'd been putting into my riding and um, what I'd been putting into my endurance cycling for such a long time like he saw the Saturday nights where you're going off to your bed at eight o'clock you've just done a 12 hour ride and you're completely exhausted and he'd seen the all, all the behind the scenes stuff so for him this wasn't out of the blue he was like yeah you got it <laughs> yeah that was really nice to have so this is my round the world bike. It's uh, called Little Pink. It's a steel frame Shand bike, so it's hand built in Scotland. It's got a few special features on it, um, like for instance the front wheel. So on this wheel it's got a dynamo hub in the front. For, I would need like a good sort of 10 hours of riding to be able to charge a battery pack. So that was like my main source of charging. I have a try bars and drop bars. So it meant I could go down on the drop bars or I could be up on the hoods 
or I could be up on the, on the arm rests or I could be on the try. So that was that was lots of lots of different positions for me. Up here was my cockpit. So this is where it was all happening. I'd have my phone mounted here, my GPS here, two bike computers here, like clocking my miles all the time. And I'd have my spot tracker. So that was like um, hooked up to a web page so anybody could log on and see if I was there. And I'd also have water bottles under here and the all important bear bells would stay up there too. So I was jangling away. And I'd fill food, these full of food, both of them full of food. So the final push into the Brandenburg gates was pretty special. It was like 36 hours I was riding for. I'd gathered some friends by that point, you know, I had folk riding with me and recording it. And it was a really fun, sociable kind of time. So sometimes I'm just like washing the dishes at home and then it comes into my head and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I actually hold the record for riding around the world. Get like proper chuffed about it. 